Dr. Doreen Grand is the Dr. Doreen is an expert in autism. Doreen Grand Dr. Grand Pichet. Dr. Doreen Grand Pichet. Dr. Doreen Grand Pichet is a visionary in the field of autism. Now you can ask her questions on Ask Dr. Doreen. I got to get to some of these questions here. Uh, super important. Somebody wrote in last night that they just started dating someone about two mm -hmm. weeks ago. Before yeah. we had even kissed, I told him that I don't like light touches, especially on my face. Actually, that I don't like people to touch my face at all. And they say, I still have not told him that I'm autistic. After we started dating, he proceeded to caress my face. He said it was just to check if I didn't like it. I said that I didn't and removed his hand. I saw him yesterday and I feel like I want to break up already. He touched my face constantly and I've had to, rem I had to remove it every time. And every time he said that he forgot, not only that, he loves to touch me all the time. I can't stand it. I don't feel comfortable. And sometimes I don't feel safe. And they are, are revealing that it's a gay relationship. The thing is that I like him. Sometimes I feel like I'm the one that's wrong because that's been a problem in every relationship that I've had. Any advice, Dr. Grampy Shea? And first of all, I want to thank this person for writing in. We're going to be talking more and more about dating and relationships on the show. And so thank you for, for kicking that off for us. I love, it. I love it. To share. I love it. Yeah. Absolutely. And and just love that question. Thank you very much for sharing. So first of all, good for you for being clear with or telling him that you don't like light touches on your face. Good for you. Like I think that is the beginning of a good relationship is good communication. So I think you did a good job there. I don't think, you know, we all go into relationships and we learn. So nothing is perfect. It's it's always going to be both sides giving what they can and both sides being fle flexible enough to pay attention to the other side and and see if, see if they can change themselves a little bit to to fit the relationship better. So it's a, it's a work in progress. Relationships don't just click from the get go, right? They you kind of have to work on them. So. Don't think that this is a bad thing and, and, you know, don't put on yourself the label that I think it's something about me because I've had this issue with other relationships. Let's just work on this relationship and see what we can do to maybe it'll work. But what has to happen, because I don't, I don't, you know, if you had told him you don't like light touches on your face and he specifically touched your face lightly to test you I don't know that that's a very kind thing to do I'm not sure that's okay so why don't you do the following and I'm glad to you know it's great that you like him and you want to give it another chance right so we're there if you want to give it another chance and you like him do two things one is tell him that you like him I would tell him and then say but these are the things that are just not okay for me. Like, I don't like you touching me all the time. I might in the future, but right now I don't. Like, maybe it wasn't clear enough to him. And you have to be very expressive about that and, and make sure he understands. Now, it's entirely up to you if you want to go further and share with him that you have autism. That's a different story. That's a personal choice. But if you do decide to tell him, then I would suggest that you tell him because of the autism, I am sensitive to certain things on my skin, but also list some of the amazing, awesome things that go with autism. For example, you know, I'm also sensitive to people's feelings or I'm also very creative or I'm also, uh, you know, I have an incredible ability to remember things, all the amazing things. So there's always, it's, it, you know, autism has pluses in mind. It has all just like everything else, just like all of us, everybody has strengths and weaknesses. And you might want to just make sure that you're very clear with him, whether or not you label it, that's up to you, but just be very clear and make sure that he knows that you're not just telling him what not to do, 
But you're also telling him, listen, I do like you. So I'd like to spend more time, but it has to be under these conditions. And you've done nothing wrong. You've done everything right there because you're protecting yourself. You're doing something that's going to be good for you. And you're very, in a caring way, explaining what kind of relationship you want. And I think that's always very essential. Such great advice, Dr. Grant Pichet. I have, I have dogs barking all over the house now. Um, I apologize to everyone. But um, I do want to say that one of the things that I learned in autism, um, because I'm I'm not good at boundaries. I, I don't think, you know, as, as loving and fabulous as my parents were, I don't think that they were taught boundaries. So And so I don't think that they knew how to teach me boundaries. I can't speak for anybody else. Right. But it wasn't until my son was in his ABA program and they were teaching him boundaries and levels of friendship. And, and it was just fascinating to watch how they were teaching someone this. And, and people say all the time, well, ABA, it just turns people into yes people. And then they don't, then they're fodder to be taken advantage of. And I found it exactly the opposite. Can I just say, I found that ABA taught my son how to tell people no. And when to tell people no, and that it was up to him. And I have always, that's one of the many things that I cherished about it. But we went through a circumstance when he was in first grade, that there was a little boy that he just adored in his classroom. And he, you know, this little kid was his buddy and he wanted to do everything with him. And the kid was mean to him. And I don't mean just mean, the kid had problems and he would, they would go out on the playground and more than once they found him taking the little cords in my son's hood and trying to strangle my child with them. And fortunately, you know, my son had an aide on the, on the playground. And so he didn't choke him, but I mean, it happened more than once and they took the kid aside and, and, but they also, our team of ABA people also talked to Jem about it, about, you know, well, why is he doing that? And what do you say when he does that? And then Jem said to him, stop, you're hurting me. I don't like what you're doing. Stop. And that his friend kept doing that. And what the ABA therapist taught him, and I was there in the room and it was such a, uh, you know, one of those light bulb moments for me. What they said Mm -hmm. is, you know, they'd already taught him levels of friendship and that you can have people that you trust and people that are just acquaintances and so on and so forth. And they said, when you tell a friend that to stop, that they're hurting you and they don't, then they are not a close friend. Right. Right. And, and I was like, oh my gosh, I, I was an adult. You know, those memes where they say I was this many days old when I learned this, (laughs) I was that many days old. I was an adult and I was like, oh, I didn't realize that, that A, you can say to somebody, please stop, that's hurting me. And if you say it and they keep doing it, then it's time to step away. That doesn't mean you don't, you you don't have to like hate them or it might be that they're not capable of stopping. Right. Um, But it does mean, you know, you're not going to get your needs met and that that is a different level of friendship. We can have acquaintances, but and, and I, I was like, oh my goodness, I watched them teach that to my son and I learned it right along with him. Absolutely. So I, I love that we're talking about this and, and getting, you know, your needs met in the relationship and communicating your needs. But if your needs aren't being met in the relationship, I don't know. I think especially for a lot of us, we think that we're supposed to be teachers, lifelong teachers. And I do believe in investing in relationships where you learn together but if somebody, if you tell somebody this is hurting me and they don't stop, then they're not a close friend. That's right. That's right. Words to live by. Words to live by. If you found anything helpful in this video, please give us a like. In fact, make sure that you smash that subscribe button on YouTube and give us a like on Facebook. You can also follow us on Twitter and Instagram for important updates. And please download our free podcast wherever you get your podcasts. See you next time. Until then, give your kiddos a hug from me and one for you too. Bye-bye for now. To subscribe, click here. And if you'd like to check out some more of our videos, click here.